How long have you been in the, the addiction business? I s got my board certification in addiction about four years ago, and I've been treating addiction for the last about 15 years. Mm -hmm. Why is it so important to you? The addiction is, is rising in this community, and I feel like a lot of my patients who came to me for a psychiatric problem, but underneath they also had addiction problem. So I wanted to be better prepared to handle my patients. And recently, in the last five years, addiction has increased significantly. So more and more patients are coming directly to me asking help for treatment of addiction. Why? Why do you think that is? Uh, the addiction in the community can rise for many different reasons. Uh, this addiction that, that I am addressing is the opioid addiction. Uh, Florida was a really a hotbed for opioid addiction about six years ago when uh, authority had to take a step and, and shut down some of the medical clinics who were uh, prescribing opioid uh, uh, for the wrong patients. Uh, after uh, those clinics were shut down, opioid addiction uh, spread in the community and people have turned to drugs like heroin, fentanyl, and most recently, a crocodile. Mm -hmm. And the issues are all over. Tell me about some of the issues that you're seeing. So the opioid addiction has spread significantly in Duval County as well as in Florida and all over the United States. Uh, there are good treatment available and we're, we're able to treat opioid addiction successfully if somebody's willing to follow the treatment. But there is a lot of misunderstanding and misconception about the treatment, about what does it take for the recovery and maintenance of recovery. Mm -hmm. So my clinic, uh, we're able to provide treatment with a medically assisted program. Uh, we also have been actively involved in conducting research. Last 15 years, we have gotten really good success with using daily tablets of buprenorphine, which can prevent opioid relapses. But it's an everyday pill, and in many situations, it's not convenient. So our new research is addressing the need to have a long-acting injectable buprenorphine. Okay. Uh, buprenorphine is, is a partial agonist on the opiate receptors. Uh, it prevents the craving. It protects the person from any unusual use of opioid. But, uh, as I explained before, it requires daily use of buprenorphine. Mm -hmm. And there is a uh, abuse potential on those buprenorphine also. Okay. Keep the door closed so you don't get... I think it's okay. Back out yeah. Um, and, and for people that don't understand, first of all, let's talk about what opioids do. So opioid is, is a uh, chemical that goes into the brain and it stimulates receptors in the brain, particularly the dopamine. When dopamine is released, your brain, your body kind of feels happy. So you have a euphoric effect, which is very quick. And that euphoric effect turns into, for some people, more energy, uh, desire to, to do things more, become more active. And that can last, depending on the type of opioid you take, anywhere from one hour to six hours. But when that drug wears off, a person will go through significant withdrawal symptoms. In order to prevent the withdrawal symptoms, a person will take another opioid. And then cycle goes on and off. Mm -hmm. Now, opioid is, is a very powerful medication to treat any acute pain. If somebody has an injury, they will benefit from using opioid. If somebody has a back pain, they will benefit from opioid. Mm -hmm. And heroin also. So is. heroin is, is all illegal. There's no medical use of heroin at this time. Heroin is not approved medically. 
But heroin is much more fast-acting opioid. It gets in your system in a few seconds and reaches the extreme high level in your brain and gives you a, a significant powerful high, but it lasts no more than two to three hours. And, and the heroin has to be given intravenous. So people will try to damage their vein and, and has all different type of complication related to IV usage. And some people die right away. So when you're using street drugs like heroin, you don't know what you're getting in there. And if you get a higher amount than your body is able to tolerate, you get the respiratory depression. And that is the main cause of death that you, you're trying to get some high or you're trying to prevent the withdrawal, but you get such a high concentration of drug that will suppress the respiration. You stop breathing. You stop breathing. Your brain does not send the signal to breathe. Is that also what happens when people overdose on prescription pills? Correct. So prescription pill, let's say you need about 30 pills to overdose. With heroin, you can get like a one or two shot of heroin. And, and it equals 30 pills. And it's exactly the same thing. Uh, the stronger medicine that just came out is fentanyl and crocodile. Those two drugs are, are so dangerous and so potent. So when person is addicted to opioid, they go to the higher level because the same amount is not working for them. So they start with the pill, they go to the higher level, which is heroin, from heroin, they go to fentanyl, which is a much higher level. And then recently we heard the case that we had a case of crocodile, which in Duwak County it's a new thing, but in Russia it's, it's very prevalent. The scary thing about crocodile is that you can mix it at home. The heroin, fentanyl, you can buy it on the internet. So the emergency room department, they're flooded with cases. They get hundreds of cases come in with overdose on the opioid. The emergency departments, I mean, uh, the, emer the paramedic services, they're also flooded with calls that people are just passing out. And if they don't reach the emergency room in time, they can die. Wow. And I've heard that it knows no age, no boundaries, no economic status. I mean, this that's drug the scary uses. part that, that opioid addiction, it's going to cross the boundaries. It's going to cross any socioeconomical class, any job status. I, I have seen people in, in an extremely high position. And we have heard about all the celebrities, including most recent death prince they are connected with, with the opioid addiction. Mm -hmm. So opioid addiction can go across the socioeconomic class, uh, racial class, and, and it's, it's so scary that it's specific to certain people. Like if you give opioid to 100 people, not all 100 people are going to get addicted or ask for more opioid. It's the people who have a certain genetic susceptibility you, it's almost like you, you give them a wake-up call. You turn the switch on for those people. And, and they could be innocent. They could have like a simple injury to take the pain medicine, prescribed by a physician, but it turns the switch on. And they are going to look for more and more pills. It's Russian roulette. Russian roulette. It's a random. So there's going to be a lot of parents watching this piece that are going to say, if this can happen to anyone, how do I make sure that it doesn't happen to my loved ones? It's very scary. It's spreading even in children. We have seen the cases of 15 and 16 year old coming with using opioid from their uh, family's cabinet or from their parents. So we, we want all the parents and everybody to know that if you suspect anybody in your family you need to immediately get them evaluated by a professional. The help is available, it can be treated effectively, but this is a scenario where person suffering, person going through addiction is not gonna ask for help because it occupies the part of the brain 
where you lose a good judgment. And you try to do everything to hide your addiction and you try to do everything to support your addiction by using drugs again and again. You sell things from your house, you buy things on the street, and, and those things are the big signals. How big's the problem right now? So right now, the problem is rising at a phenomenal rate. Compared to four years ago, I would say that death related to opioid is about four times more. That's in Jacksonville? That's in Jacksonville and all over the country. I mean, the statistics are coming out and it's, it's significantly high. So in the last two, three years, the problem is almost double every year. And it, it's, a, it's a difficulty for the whole community. Everybody has to participate. Everybody has to be aware. And, and those pills are available anywhere. So we are trying to educate physicians about how to treat pain condition without using opioid. We, we try to educate emergency room physicians about when you see a case is coming, you, not only you save the life and, and you get them out of the danger, but also provide follow-up treatment. We have rehab facilities who is trying to manage those patients. My office, we're managing them in an outpatient basis. Uh, the public health department is taking active role in, in supplying educations to parents and, and providing all the necessary tools that parents can use. This could affect anyone's family. Absolutely. This can affect anyone's family. So Even ours. Even ours. And, and that's the scary part. That you, you could have somebody in your family who has the genetic tendency and, and taking the pill one time can trigger the round of addiction. So most of the people that I treated, they started innocently by taking the pill given by a physician. And then they didn't even know they slipped into their addiction. Do you want to talk to Ernest? Sure, uh, yeah, I'll just wrap up. Uh, so the, the question, now that I'm, I'm hearing, I did a little bit of research, I'm hearing that a lot of these addictions start at the dentist's office. So, so pain treatment can be dental pain. So most healthy young adult, they've never taken any pain medicine, they go through the dentist's office first time, and they get the five-day supply of opioid to, to handle the pain coming from the teeth. And that five-day supply can trigger the whole round of addiction. Same thing can happen in sports injury. If you have a young kid who is playing sport and they get injured, they go to the doctor and they get the opioid prescription, that could be the beginning of the cycle of addiction. And really quickly, tell me, you, you were uh, the principal investigator. So I so. have been treating uh, opioid addiction as well as I have been running clinical trials. So the trials that I was running for the last five years was a drug called Probufin. Probufin is an advancement compared to what's available for us now. Probufin is an implant that goes under the skin and provides the smooth delivery of buprenorphine up to six months. So that implant has been approved by FDA and today we can do the implant. I have an implant physician, I can recommend the medication and we can do implant in Jacksonville. It's, it's the very beginning phase, a lot of people don't know about it. But the next two products that we're working on is injectable product. It's much easier uh, but it's not approved and it may take about two to three years to come in the market.